Right, so you want to learn how to aim in Splatoon 3. Well, you can already aim in Splatoon 3, but you want to learn how to improve it. I'm going to basically go through on how you can improve your aim in Splatoon 3. I'm going to be real. If anybody is watching this, then they are using stick controls. You're going to have to be comfortable with your stick sensitivities. It's weird for me to, to suggest how you can get better with stick controls or how to improve your aim with stick controls because it's something that I wouldn't even recommend in the first place because if you are using stick controls the first thing that I would say is you want to learn how to use motion controls if you aren't using motion controls already I will have a link in the description or on the top right left right however it is it's it's my left but it's your right uh, on this video just to tell you guys basically how to learn motion controls in general. Of course, talking about motion controls and how you improve your aim, you want to probably start or well, finding a very, very comfortable sensitivity. It has to be comfortable where it just feels like everything is clicking and everything's right. And I always tell people to start on zero zero because it's legitimately the like the middle ground for everything. If you use zero zero and you're feeling it out, you're moving around to target to target, but it doesn't feel consistent to you. And let's say if it doesn't feel consistent as it is too fast for you, if it's too fast, what you wanna do in terms of your gyro control, you slow it down by 0.5 or minus one. So let's just say if it's too fast, I'll go down to minus one. And if that feels good, then maybe that's the motion sense that you wanna use. But at the same time, you also wanna find out if the stick sense is right for you. If you chose zero zero and the stick sense feels fine to you, then go ahead and stick with it. If it doesn't and you feel like the stick sense could be faster, uh, go ahead and adjust it upwards. Try it out. Try it out with the motion. Try it out with, with the stick sensitivity and see what feels most comfortable for you. Now, obviously, there are so many different combinations. You can go as low as minus five. You can go as high as five. Uh, for both your motion and stick sensitivity. And once you've found that sensitivity, I suggest that you stick with it. You can go for one sensitivity for one week and it may not feel comfortable, but maybe you might grow your, like grow into it, you know. Once you choose one sensitivity, sensitivity and it feels good at first the first time you use it, stick with it for a week and then see how it you how it turns out uh, as the week goes on and like if you feel like you're still extremely comfortable while using that for however long amount of time, continue to use it. If after a week you've used it, and it doesn't feel comfortable and it's just like, well, okay, I've used this and I don't feel comfortable and I feel like I might need to still adjust things. And if that is the case, do that, you know, do that. Because I think at least when you're trying to really figure out what sensitivity is right for you, I feel like not a lot of people try to experiment real, like really deeply of like how much they might need to account for like with their motion and gyro. Because if you feel like you overshoot and don't or undershoot, and you don't get things straight on, then it's gonna feel, it's not gonna feel pleasant. So definitely try to experiment, experiment with the motion, experiment with the stick and see what works for you. There are a couple of things that are like not in terms of like how you improve it. Like you can play on Splatoon 3 and like try and improve your aim, choose just like a sensitivity that feels really comfortable. But there is also like other factors to it. You might have to invest in a gaming monitor. I'm gonna be real. It's something that you might have to invest for to have the lowest response time. Hello, this is post-production dude. But yes, if you have a older TV or a really large TV and not a gaming monitor, when playing Splatoon 3, you could experience something called input delay, which is basically the delay or time a button press actually shows up on the screen. This is extremely apparent when it comes to motion controls because an input from motion is happening every single frame. So in general, you want to have the lowest response time so you don't have to deal with the delay when using motion controls. Now, if you already have a gaming monitor or if you don't, I would highly recommend that you check your monitor or TV settings just in case they have a game mode option. On a large majority of TVs and monitors, this should reduce input delay significantly, thus making it a lot easier and much more comfortable to actually aim in general. Hope I explained that well and hope that helps. Moving on to some more technical things that can help improve your aim. Another thing that I also mentioned, if you watch here, making sure that you are in flight mode when playing Splatoon 3. This specifically, this is not something reduces input delay, it reduces interference with your switch, uh, especially if you're using a controller uh, via Bluetooth. This is something that I figured out in Tetris 99 because with my Joy-Con, I, I noticed that there was like button interference when I was playing the game. And when I turned my switch to flight mode, it basically completely stopped, <laughs> it, it stopped. So I was just like, Right. Well, if this happened in Tetris, this is most likely going to be a thing in Splatoon. I noticed it. I told a bunch of players to also try it for themselves. 
they also noticed it. And I was just like, okay, well, this is something that is an issue <laughs> with the Nintendo Switch. You might ask, how do you get your, your Switch into flight mode, of course, and also via the internet? If you can see on the top right right there, I don't know if I can... Oh, I can. Wow, cool. You learn something new every day. Uh, if you notice right here, it has the wire sign, basically that I've connected the, to the internet, but widely. Uh, if you don't have a wired connection, then that's going to be a little bit of an issue for you. But if you do and you are able to, if whether you're using a Nintendo Switch OLED dock that has the Ethernet port, or you're using a regular Nintendo Switch uh, dock that doesn't have one, but you're using an adapter, then uh, that is something that I would suggest uh, to get into that flight mode stuff. If you haven't already as well, this is also something that I also figured out for myself and found out via Tetris 99. Once again, <laughs> I don't know why, it's always Tetris 99. Check how many controllers that are connected to your Switch. Of course, this is something that you have to do when you're undocked. As you can see from my Switch, it says controllers paired to this console is one, which is literally this one. This is my only controller that's connected to my, to my Switch. It is basically to reduce the amount of interference that goes to your Switch that can also interfere with your controller. Why it works, I don't know, but it may help. You might have one connected as like, of course, the, the, the two Joy-Cons that were it within your Switch. I keep nine like undocked all the time. Now make sure your TV re resolution is not on automatic. Uh, even though you might have a 1080p monitor, sometimes it might scale it to something different and um, something that's very irregular, irregular and it may th make things feel a little weird. It might not make things like, feel consistent. Uh, this one as well. RGB range. Don't have it on automatic, have it on full range. Personally for me, from what I've noticed, I felt a little bit more sluggish when I'm using limited range, but it might be something that you need to play around for yourself. That is basically all the technical stuff uh, in terms of either interference or either things that will improve your input response time when it comes to moving your cursor around on the screen. Okay guys, so here I am once again, post-production me, talking to you guys something about drills. Should you do them and are they even really necessary? Now, when it comes to improving your aim, drills is something that will definitely help. I wouldn't say it's the end all be all because playing against dummies and playing against real people is definitely a much different experience when it comes to aiming because you actually have to train yourself to keep up with your opponent's movements. But the thing is with drills, what they will do to help you is allow you to feel more comfortable with whatever sensitivity you've picked and getting actually really used to the feeling of playing gyro control. So basically the first drill I'm going to talk to you guys about is just making sure that you can keep your crosshair on a target. So we have these two dummies in front of us and what I'm basically going to do is just move my gyro from one target to another and just go it back and forth. With this one, you're going to basically start off slow. What this is basically going to teach you is how much you need to move your gyro control to be able to have it on the target. So as you can kind of see with the crosshair, it flashes when the target is uh, basically in range of being hit. So, you know, you can basically speed this up whenever you're used to however fast you're doing it. So you can go, you know, Boom, 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 boom. And of course you can go a little bit further back and try and do the exact same thing. And just make sure that you feel comfortable doing it, of course. And of course, if you want to add more targets to it too, you can go from here to here to here to here, 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 here. It doesn't exactly have to have like an actual order, but it's just a thing of making sure that you feel comfortable moving your gyro. And the thing is you only use your gyro when doing this particular kind of drill. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is flicking and using your gyro at the same time. You got all these dummies around me, of course. So basically what you do here is shoot this dummy, flick to the next one, and then finish off with motion, shoot, flick to the next one, shoot, flick to the next one, shoot. And then you continue it. Now for me, funny enough, it's actually, it feels a little weird for me to do this one really slowly. Like, I feel like I need to actually speed this one up. But this is basically what this drill is. It's just flicking to the right, to the next dummy, to the next dummy. Now, of course, you can do this while jumping if you're using an H3 or whatever weapon that you're using. But this is basically what you're trying to do. So instead of just only going right, you can also go left instead. So you just know how much you need to flick the stick to go to the left. And make sure it's comfortable. And of course you can mix it up so you don't even have to be on one dummy and go to the next and then go to the next and go to the next. 
What you could also do is go from one dummy and then go for another dummy over here and then like completely mix it up. Now the reason why I say it's good to mix it up is because this is only going to teach you small flicks to one target, but if you mix it up from like let's say this dummy to all the way to this one, then it actually it's teaching you how to push your stick more depending on whatever sensitivity it's at, of course. Uh, but it basically teaches you how how much you need to, how much more you need to push it to change it into another degree. All right. So now this is another drill, and it's basically being comfortable with your 180 turns. Now, as you can see with my gyro control, this is basically what I am doing when it comes to doing 180s. As you can see, I'm just going. Well, basically using gyro and a stick at the same time or simultaneously. And the reason for why I think it's important to be able to do this is because considering Splatoon is a very fast game, you might have a lot of people who actually tend to go behind you or swim right past you, and you want to be able to be fast enough to be able to track that. Obviously, depending on whatever sense you are comfortable at or what, however slow or fast it is, your wrist and how much you need to turn your stick, that's what is mainly going to apply here. And of course, everyone's going to be different. Because you might go into situations where you're swimming forward, you need to take a 180, and then shoot the person who just went past you. You know. You can do it with both these dummies, actually. So you just do something like this. You can basically use these two dummies. Flick behind again. Go for the next one. Flick again. 180. 180 again. There we go. So you can basically just keep doing this. Just so you can get used to like switching 180 over and over again. Never press Y. All right, that person who said that in the chat, don't ever do that. Never do that. The reason for why you never do that, if you're looking this way and you're holding back and you press Y, you see what happens? Like I'm holding back still, but I move, I like go to the left, you know? It's because the thing is when you press Y, it's like, like when you're holding back, when you press Y, when you're turning this way, you're still holding back, so it makes you go left, you know? It makes things like, like, of course there's an added lag, but like, at the same time, it makes you like, turn really strangely. And it's, it doesn't feel natural. So whenever it comes to doing a 180 turn or anything like that, sometimes you might just overshoot. And also when you press Y, it always locks like, at a certain level all the time. So like, you can't do Y targeting when it comes to like, going to a target like that, you know? This is something that only motion can do, you know? If there's someone up there, you just do motion like that. And they're up there, you know? So basically, those are all my drills. Try them out if you haven't already. Again, it's not going to make you into the best aimer of all time, but it'll at least make you more comfortable when playing this game. Now, there is this thing in Splatoon that is called shot deviation. Now, basically how shot deviation works in Splatoon 3 is that your first few shots are always going to be the most accurate. But the longer you hold the trigger down, your shots are going to be even less accurate. Now, when your shots are going all over the place, what you need to do is basically go back inside the ink and just relax a little bit. Because there's basically this hidden timer within the game where you have to, like, wait for your weapon to actually recover for it to go back to its first shot accuracy again. So in a TLDR, basically your first shots are always going to be the most accurate. Meaning, if you're playing a game, you swim up to a person, and you shoot this person, your first shot should always be the most accurate. However, let's say I shoot this guy, my first shots are accurate, I swim up, I shoot this guy, I start painting, but then I notice there's a guy on my right and I start shooting this guy. It's not, of course, going to show with like a weapon with a splash up pro, but ideally you don't want to do that because the longer you're shooting, the less accurate you're going to be over time. And this is something that doesn't exactly show with dummies, but with real players, this definitely shows. Really, really helpful to know that, especially when you're using really inaccurate weapons, like let's say the 96 gal or the 52 gal, that notoriously have really bad RNG. With these two weapons, you always want to get your first two shots on target all the time and just kind of swim and back and forth to your next target and all that type of stuff. And also, of course, wait long enough before you actually go for your next target too because your shot accuracy could get basically more inaccurate uh, over time. Lastly, leading your shots are very, very important in Splatoon 3. If you didn't know, every single bullet that comes from all weapons in this game are projectiles. So there is going to be bullet travel time when it comes to using any weapon in the game. 
as you can see, when I shoot this dummy in particular, and of, of course when it's moving, I have my crosshair on them, but I'm never hitting my shots on them, even when my crosshair is dead on them. Which means when the dummy moves, I need to lead my have my crosshair a little bit more ahead of the dummy. By doing this, I can account for the shot velocity of the weapon that I'm using, and also get my bullets ahead of the dummy so that I can shoot them while they're moving. It takes a little bit to get used to, but a lot of weapons actually require doing this. And of course, some weapons have faster shot velocities than others. So whatever weapon you're using, you just have to learn how fast that weapon shoots so you can actually account for that actual shot velocity. The most important thing when it comes to aiming is making sure that you are comfortable. Like, you want to be really comfortable, where it feels like you can just go to each target every single time. And it just feels natural, you know? It doesn't, you don't, like, the thing that you want to get with aiming, which I feel like it's harder to do with sticks, and much easier to do with motion, is that you don't even want to have to think about aiming, you know? I feel like when you're thinking about, oh, I have to move my crosshair like this, and then move my crosshair back, and then do this and do that, like, I feel like when you do that, it clogs up your mind of, like, things that are, like, that feel important, you know? Like, things that are happening right in front of you in the game. If you can make sure that you can get into a, a, a state of mind where, like, you don't think about it, it happens, you know? It just naturally, it's just, it's just intuitive and it just goes, you know? Then that's when I feel like you're, you get to a point where it's just like, yeah, man. We chillin'. I'm playing some Splatoon and it's great, you know, it, I, I can aim at everything. I don't have to think about it. It just, it just happens, you know. Of course, it doesn't happen overnight. It really doesn't. You're gonna have to put some time into it, all right? Have to practice. Practice does not make you perfect. It will never make you perfect. Anyone who tells you it makes you perfect, they are liars, all right? They are complete liars. Do not listen to them. What practice will do is that it will make you better. It will make you better. And the thing is about why I'm saying it like this is because you will never be perfect. You can always improve. Even if you think you're perfect, you're not. You can make sure you can still get make sure that your aim is better in some sort of way. That's only going to come with even more practice. Keep improving. Keep doing what you're doing. Get those drills in. Do what makes you feel comfortable and all that jazz. So that's basically how you improve your aim in Splatoon 3. I hope you enjoyed listening to that talk. Obviously, this will go on YouTube, so get your high YouTubes in chat if you want to be inside the video. Like I said before, if you haven't watched the motion guide, make sure you check it in the description below and make sure you check, check it on the top right, uh, which will also show you uh, the motion guide as well. So anyways, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video on YouTube. Uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share it everywhere. Make sure to uh, like the video as well. And uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you very much. And I shall see you guys in a future video.